Good afternoon, everyone. I think we're going to get into a panel shortly, but uh, we're going to kick off. And I felt what would be a good speech be without slides. So it's always good to have a few slides. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to walk through something. At Nokia, actually last year, we started putting together what we now call as the tech vision for 2030. We started looking at what the world of 2030 would be in terms of how we as users are evolving, how the world in terms of its geopolitical evolution will be, and what impact would that be on the technology that would exist in 2030. We then took a step forward and then we said, okay, how would the networks be? What would be the load on those networks? And then we brought it back to what should we do as an industry and a company to be ready for that. So I'll show you a short glimpse of that today. Let's start with some tech trends that we now are quite confident of. Cloud economy, this started a decade or more ago, but this is clearly one of the trends that we believe will dominate until 2030. And cloud economy, and we put that bubble of 5G and 6G in the middle there, and that's because in the business of connectivity, we've had now, this is our fifth generation of wireless connectivity, but our belief is that somewhere between this generation and the next generation of 6G, connectivity would also move to the cloud. Cloud will become an enabler also for how we consume connectivity. The other trend that uh, I believe we'll talk a little bit more about in the panel as well, is the web, the evolution of the internet. If you go back in 1970s, there wasn't an internet around. There was some data exchange protocols. Then came the 80s and the internet came along, mostly to download stuff. And uh, it was the information economy that started to exist. Then came the 90s and the last decade. And in those decades, that information economy became a platform economy. It was to download stuff, but also to upload stuff, and a few dominant platforms came into existence. Now we're entering an era where it's not just to read and write with the internet, it's also to verify. We're entering a trustless economy. And as somebody on the west coast of the US would say, we're entering the blockchain economy on the web. That's the second trend we believe is gonna be quite important to consider in 2030. And then an overarching trend, I'm sure everybody in this room has heard the term metaverse. That we believe is the overarching trend of how the cloud and the web with connectivity as the underlying bedrock will come together to create a digitalization of this world through metaverse. And right in the middle where all of these intersect is the technology that everyone talks about and everyone understands somewhat now is AI. All of these are powered through machine learning. And then we started assessing as to what the impact on the market would be. This is what one assessment is. We're talking about a market size, which is almost like a new GDP, an eight to $13 trillion economic growth. And then you can look at the numbers for the rest of those bubbles as well. This is what we believe 2030 would bring, and this is what we as an industry and a company have to be ready for. And then we looked at the metaverse. Now this term metaverse, of course, is much talked about now, but at Bell Labs, we started researching actually the two building blocks of the metaverse. The first being digital, physical fusion. is the confluence of the cyber and the real. And this is about creating a digital twin of everything that you can create a digital twin of, complemented by human augmentation. How do you insert a human? How do you actually create a virtual representation of something and manipulate the real object through virtual interaction. That's human augmentation. 
At Bell Labs, we were writing papers about this in you know, 2012. We didn't come up with the word metaverse. But now, since the word's popular, we started to think about this a little bit deeper. We believe that this metaverse will evolve. Today, it's quite rudimentary in the way it exists. There are digital twins, mostly in the industrial domain, some entertainment, some gaming. There is human augmentation, but very rudimentary devices. By 2030, our belief is that both of these will evolve significantly. The power profile of these devices, we will go into exoskeletons. We will then also see very complex digital twins. So what kind of metaverse would exist? And our firm belief is that metaverse is not a singular, it's a plural. The metaverse has to exist in three different dimensions. The most often talked about, the consumer metaverse, social, entertainment, gaming. Our belief is that it will happen the last because the price sensitivity and the technology evolution has a way to go. There is an enterprise metaverse, which is around collaboration, training, corporate, enterprise, IT evolution to metaverse. We are now in a live environment having this forum, but you could have basically a metaverse-driven Millennium Awards. And then our belief is that the most fundamental difference will be in the industrial metaverse. This has begun to exist today. There are digital twins. There are digital twins, complex digital twins that exist today of factories, of fabs, of bridges, and they're being used extensively already. This metaverse, in our opinion, will exist the first. And then we started to think about, okay, how do we get the technology right? We're in the era of 5G. We need to move to something else. What would that be? And a brief representation of what we think the evolution of the last mile connectivity that will be required. A network ready for metaverse, what would it look like? We're now in 5G, we're moving to 5G advanced, going to 6G. And there are some characteristics which are quite understood. Of course, we will have much more throughput, the latency will be better, localization would be very, very you know, precise. Today, we know, all of us, we carry this device. And if you were to make an emergency call, the closest PSAP would know that you are in this building. The accuracy of localizing this device is about 50 square meters, and that's what we will find out. But if you're gonna put this metaverse on a production floor, you need to know that that connectivity device is not in this room, but here, in this centimeter in three dimension. There will be more sensors than humans using that network, and that's what we envision with 6G. So we've already started work on 6G. I actually yesterday was at the Brooklyn 6G Summit. We kicked it off with New York University. This is a big part of what we are now trying to get ready for. And these are the six dimensions of 6G. So we figured if it's 6G, it should be six dimensions, right? Uh, it's driven by artificial intelligence. Throughput of 100 gigabits per second. It's not built for 50,000 devices per square kilometer. It's built for 10 million sensing devices per square kilometer. It's not built for microsecond latency. It's built for nanosecond latency. It's quantum safe. This is what the world will need for a true pervasive metaverse to exist. And with that note, <laughs> if there was a message in there, I missed it, but okay. <laughs> My message to you, this metaverse, based on the bedrock of 6G, it has to be open and inclusive. It can be a privilege of a few. We would have failed at our jobs if that's the case. This metaverse is open and invitational for everyone and is built 
not by one company, not by one industry, but collaboratively by all. Thank you.